There is no doubt that Night Dog has proven to be a masterclass studio within the gaming industry. Every game that is produced in the team never fails to deliver. They are some of, if not the most polished games one could come across. Over the decades, Night Dog have built themselves a very strong support system of loyal fans who highly anticipate each and every project announcement. Of course, when there's fans of suspense, it's very strategic to captivate and have communication commence. If we take a look into fans' eyes today, you can presume they're frustrated, disappointed, or dying of thirst when it comes to any news regarding The Last of Us Part 2. Fans seem to be very disrespectful or aggressive at the moment as well, further expressing the distaste they have towards the rollout of information Night Dog's given their software release of The Last of Us. Today I want to have a bit of an analysis regarding the marketing that's provided alongside Night Dog's games to their fans. Reason being, I feel the team has had a very different, much more conservative approach when it comes to the communications of The Last of Us Part 2 in comparison to previous projects. So let's take a look at Uncharted 4 A Thieves Inn. Uncharted 4 was announced back on November 14, 2013 and went on to be released May 10, 2016. The original announcement for the game at that point in time set up a story that was very different from what we got in the final release. This is because the original creative director of Uncharted, Amy Hennig, departed from the studio. She was replaced by Noah Druckmann, while Bruce Straley replaced Justin Richmond as co-game director. Sony claimed that this wouldn't affect the timeline of release for Uncharted 4, but I'm going to go ahead and give them the benefit by saying it more than probably did affect the timeline due to the complete rework of the story the game went through whenever it got into Noah Druckmann's hands. You can see the shift in the E3 trailer from 2014 which was nothing more than another CGI trailer dropping hints of what the outline of our story would be. This is also where we get the subtitle for the game, A Thief's End, alongside a release date window of 2015. Six months later, during PlayStation Experience 2014, we got our first in-game look of Uncharted 4. This was 15 minutes of live gameplay that was actually being played by Bruce Shirley on stage in real time. The gameplay that was previewed was the Maroon Chapter. This is where we got our first look at Nathan Drake's brother, Sam. After the end of our new look of the game, we still didn't receive a concrete release date. We just knew it was coming the following year 2015. That was until March 11th of that year when No Druckmann gave an update regarding Uncharted 4 on the PlayStation blog, stating, Since we showed you our first gameplay reveal of Uncharted 4 at Thieves' End, more of the game and story have come together, and it's become clear to us that this game is much more ambitious than we originally envisioned. After seeing so many years with Nathan Drake, he means a lot to the team, and telling the climactic chapter of his adventures is a task we don't take lightly. This game deserves every bit of the attention to detail, precise pacing, and nuanced storytelling Naughty Dog is known for, so we've made the difficult choice of pushing the game's release date. Giving us a few extra months will make certain that Uncharted 4 Thieves Inn not only meets the team's high standards, but the high standards that gamers have come to expect from a Naughty Dog title. Thank you for your patience. We know the extra weight will be excruciating, but you'll see it be worth it as we reveal more about Uncharted 4 over the next year. The team at Naughty Dog will be heads down working through 2015, making sure that Nathan Drake's story gets the closure it deserves. Come spring 2016, you and Nate are in for one thrilling emotional ride. Following the delay, we got another look at the game at E3 2015, which showed off an 8 minute gameplay containing the ultimate car chase sequence. They then went to show off an extended version of this gameplay just two weeks later, which is where we saw the high speed action packed Sam Pursuit where Nathan is roped onto a moving truck taking out shoreline agents in an urgent attempt to reach his brother and escape from the astronomical threat. On August 31st, 2015, fans got an amazing announcement over the PlayStation blog. The official release date of Uncharted 4 is given to the public and is set for March 18th. If that wasn't exciting enough, this is also where they revealed all the pre-order options for the game, ranging from the Standard Edition, Special Edition, Libertalia Collector's Edition, and the Digital Deluxe Edition. They also gave the scoop on various pre-order bonuses you could receive depending on which retailer you decide to buy the game from. This is also where we got our first insight on the Uncharted Story DLC, which later came out to be a full-fledged video game known as Uncharted The Lost Legacy in 2017. For the first time since Uncharted 4 was announced in 2013, it seemed to be actually coming out. Fans were finally able to put their money down on the game and knew exactly when they'll get their hands on. On October 27th, 2015, we got the official multiplayer reveal trailer for Uncharted 4. This was followed up by an online beta that was accessible to everyone who bought the Uncharted Nathan Drake collection. The beta ran from December 3rd through the 13th. Uncharted 4 received another teaser trailer at PSX 2015, where we got another look at Sam Drake. This was a cinematic cutscene from Endgame where Nathan and his brother finally reunite after 15 years of being separated, and Nathan figures out that his brother didn't actually die in their prison escape. 
December 21st, another CGI trailer of Uncharted 4 was released, known as Man Behind the Treasure, which still instated is March 18th release. Then on December 23rd, No Druckmann had another update on the game over on the PlayStation blog, where he confirms another delay. He states, Let's start with the good news. Uncharted 4 Thieves' End is wrapping up production and is shaping up to be the proper send-off for Nathan Drake that we've promised you. The bad news is that we need a bit more time to finish the game so it meets our standards and vision. Let's cut to the chase. Uncharted 4 Thieves' End has a new release date in North America of April 26th, 2016. This is our largest Uncharted game to date and the team has been working incredibly hard to meet the challenge of closing out the game's development in a timely manner. However, as we approached our final deadlines and started wrapping up the game's levels, we realized that several key sequences needed extra resources to bring them to the finish line. After carefully considering all our options, we decided to extend our schedule, making sure that we get a few more passes before submitting our gold master. Pushing the date is not an easy choice, and we wouldn't do it if we didn't feel in our hearts it's the best course of action for the game. To you, our loyal fans, we hope you'll accept our sincere apology. We know many of you have been waiting patiently for Nathan Drake's final chapter, and now we humbly ask you to wait a bit longer. On April 26th, the most ambitious installment in the Uncharted series will be in your hands. If you guys haven't been keeping count of the amount of delays seen this far, we are sitting at three total delays. Continuing on with the marketing timeline, on February 24th, we got the official story trailer for the game. Then, March 1st, fans' biggest nightmare came to fruition yet again. The game saw its fourth and final delay. The bearer of bad news this time around was the head of PlayStation at the time, Sean Layton, who took the say, as you know, Naughty Dog is wrapping up production on Uncharted 4 Thieves' End, with the game on track to go gold and into production later this month. In an effort to meet the considerable worldwide demand, and to ensure that all gamers worldwide have the opportunity to play the game on day one, we have chosen to postpone the launch of the game by two weeks to allow for extra manufacturing time. Therefore, Uncharted 4 Thieves' End has a new worldwide release date of May 10th, 2016. We know this news might be disappointing, and we are sorry to have to make you wait a little longer to play Naughty Dog's latest. The good news is that the game is phenomenal. We are fully confident they'll be worth the wait, and the team at Naughty Dog is eager as ever for you to experience Nathan Drake's final adventure. We thank you for your continued support for PlayStation. After this delay, Naughty Dog blasted this game in our faces with six videos highlighting key elements that Uncharted 4 is bringing to the table in behind-the-scene-esque material. This rollout of information ranged from March 8th through the 30th. Then finally, on April 4th, we got our last big preview of the game, which was the 16-minute Madagascar gameplay. From there up until release, Naughty Dog sprinkled 30-second teaser clips for fans to quench their thirst on. Now if we were to take an overview look at the marketing and communication behind Uncharted 4, we could say it was great. The fans were never left astray, we received loads of insight regarding the game with a lot of that being raw gameplay and cinematics. The longest wait we endured for information was roughly 6 months, which is nothing compared to what we have gone through currently with the Last of Us Part 2 development cycle. Apart from the painstaking delays that totaled up to 4, the fan to dev communication was superb. After playing and completing Uncharted 4, looking back at this strategy, I have a lot of gripes of why Naughty Dog should have undergone this approach. First, let's start with the release date. I feel Uncharted 4 undergoing 4 delays was a bit heavy hitting. I know the last delay was due to logistics, but the other three were simply the team pulling more time to bring their ambition to fruition. I want to start by saying, I see nothing wrong at all in delaying a game. I actually stand with the decision 100%, but I feel like there shouldn't have been a peep of release until they had more of an overview of things as sections were being closed off. This is where their problem initially landed and forced them to seek out more time to reach their desired polish. Given the release window could be a pretty premature decision as well. Because if you haven't gotten your eyes set on the day you think you can launch the game, you run the risk of you not being able to fulfill that window. In turn, backing yourself into a corner to where you have to give yourself more room to operate so you don't disappoint fans come the time of release, which then leads to fans being disappointed regardless because you didn't follow through with the release you originally instituted. This also could increase the pressure because it raises the stakes. When a game is delayed, expectation is higher, especially with such claims as the game is the biggest and the most ambitious yet. People will be more critical when they get the game because they were forced to allow more time for the art to be perfected. So in conclusion to the release date, it should have been held closer to the chest. As for the marketing of Uncharted 4, I genuinely feel like they showed off way too much of the game. The biggest set piece out of the entire experience is the same pursuit that happens midway through our story. This was quite the treat to have previewed to show off the game, but for how vast of a moment that was, including the huge pivotal shift in the storyline after Elena finds out Nathan was lying about the Malaysia job, it comes off to be one huge spoiler. I can see why this was done though. This is where Naughty Dog unveiled Elena to the fans. 
This seemed like a great move because we are yet to know the context of the game. But once it's in our hands, the cinematic being in the back of our minds becomes a plot spoiler once we become aware of some of the game's context. When they originally showed off Sam's pursuit, it was done perfectly. Naughty Dog showed us about half of the set piece, leaving us off with one huge cliffhanger after Nathan grappled onto the truck in the screen cuts to black just before making impact with the blocking debris. This leaves mystery of what's to happen next and a burning desire to see how such an event concluded. But instead, they later on showed the rest of the sequence as well as gave us that cinematic that again ruined the mystery of if Elena would find out Nathan is lying. Another spoiled mystery of the game that was ruined in the marketing is how Nathan reunited with his brother Sam. The cinematic teaser at PSX 2015 we could have gone without. We knew Sam was Nathan's brother, but we didn't know how he found his way across Nathan's path. What could have been another surprise was blatantly spoiled. It's not too big a deal, but this cutscene is literally what kicks off the plot of the game, so it would have been better off being organically discovered in everyone's first playthrough of the game. Now for the last and final mistake with the marketing of this game came when they released 16 minutes of footage previewing the Madagascar chapter. This chapter is famous for being a semi-open sandbox where you can freely explore in the jeep. It's also another chapter that felt pretty big within the game. Again, this should have been left for a surprise because we have never seen anything like this in a previous Uncharted game. I don't feel like this is insight the player should know going into the game. It could have been a great moment of realization where you just see how the level design over at Naughty Dog has evolved. Even Anthony Newman, who was now the co-game director on The Last of Us Part 2, who was then a lead game designer on Uncharted 4, tweeted out that people who knew for sure they were buying the game shouldn't watch. When someone asked if it contained spoilers, he went on to say he'd rather go in as blind as possible. So yes, even though Uncharted 4 marketing was very open, it definitely would have been better off if less was shown. Now let's talk The Last of Us Part 2. Going into the development of this game, Naughty Dog definitely took note of how things went with Uncharted 4. Essentially, there were aspects they definitely wanted to improve on when it came to the development cycle of the game, first being the release date announcement. After the horrendous handling of a release date with Uncharted 4 that led to disappointing fans repeatedly with 4 delays, they made it very clear that they wanted to keep such an announcement much closer to the chest this time around to avoid that issue. Second was to ease up on marketing. Like I said before, the marketing of Uncharted 4 definitely did a great job of building great amounts of hype and anticipation, but it simply just showed off too much of the game. The preview showed off some of the best moments, leaving it very clear that there were just too many trailers, teasers, and gameplays released. The Last of Us Part 2 is the sequel to arguably the world's greatest video game. Part 1 is also highly praised in regards to its storytelling. Naughty Dog knew this announcement would drive the world crazy. There was already plenty of speculation going around of a part two before it was even announced. So being very mindful of what they shared to keep that wow factor as high as possible in regards to the story was a very high priority going into development. Now with these lessons being learned and applied, let's review the marketing thus far in regards to The Last of Us Part Two, as well as the Night Dog team's communication to the fans. Things kicked off at PSX 2016 when The Last of Us Part Two was announced. We got a CGI trailer that shows off Ellie, but leaves Joel masked as well as a little insight in regards to the plot that we got from Neil Druckmann during the PSX panel, which was, this is a story about hate. Ellie is now 19 years old, and will be living this story through the eyes of Ellie, meaning she's our new main protagonist. This was the last we heard from the game until October 30th, 2017, during Paris Games Week. Night Dog premiered an in-game cinematic from The Last of Us Part II that excluded Ellie and Joel. Instead, it sported all new characters to the series. The main three being taken away was Yara, Lev, and the highly speculated Mystery Woman. From there, we got to see the game in full glory with the gameplay reveal at E3 2018, which took place June 11th. Here we got to reunite with Ellie and meet two new characters, Jesse and Dina. Still no word from Joel at this time though. After seeing how ambitious this game truly was from the gameplay and the huge mystery in regards to the story, it left fans, including myself, dying for more. What shocked many was that there was still no release date announcement for the game. As much as I must immediately say that sucked after I finished watching that gameplay live, it was surely for the best. But this is where we embarked the most enduring, painstaking wait ever. We went through a full year and a half of complete silence from the Naughty Dog team. With this pattern of how the game has been shown off thus far, which is inside look followed by complete silence, I grew to forget about this game every time we saw it. It's not that I still wasn't excited for it, but more so when something isn't really talked about, it's forgotten. 
especially when there's so many other blockbuster exclusives being released in the midst of this game being developed. I didn't grow my obsession of looking at anything I could find on this game until May of 2019 when I really started getting into YouTube. But moving on from that side tangent and back to the marketing timeline, the public was teased while GameStop employees got a bit of a taste behind closed doors on August 27th. Then there was another private media event announced for September 24th, which hurt even more, but that was until State of Play Episode 3 was announced to take place on the same exact day. On this day, we got the release date reveal trailer, which I went absolutely insane over, as well as a PlayStation blog post announcing all the different editions for the game ready for pre-order, which consisted of the Standard Edition, Special Edition, Digital Deluxe, Collector's Edition, and the Ellie's Edition. We then learned that the individuals who got hands on with the game will be able to discuss their impressions and what they saw two days later on Outbreak Day. And inside the demo video from the devs will drop as well. Come Outbreak Day, we had an information overload. We had all new gameplay premiere, which was spectacular. Tons of interviews where we had lots of new insights on the game regarding the story. Also, people who played three hours of the game told us everything they got out of their experience. This was the most exciting time for the entirety of the development process within the community. For once, this game actually felt real, like something we would genuinely have in our hands. The release date was February 21st, and Naughty Dog gave a lot of assurance when this date was announced. Neil Druckmann said the team had been very heads down working diligently on the game, that they didn't want to speak much until they knew they were sure the experience was coming together to the point they were ready. He also expressed how they really didn't want to spoil much of the story, and they were being as mindful as possible with their rollout of information, and more was coming as we neared closer to release. At this point in time, things felt very promising, and I was so sure that Naughty Dog had nailed the marketing this time around in the team communication. Leading up to the release was looking pretty promising to be perfect, but there was one flaw that they made that we will later discuss in regards to the multiplayer behind The Last of Us Part 2, but excluding that, everything was fine. Then when everything seemed to be going right, a few weeks later, reports started to surface saying the game was going to be delayed. This brought instant panic, but I as well as many others stayed very calm and had their doubts due to how sure Naughty Dog had seemed. That's when on the morning of October 24th, Neil Druckmann announced the game has a new release date of May 29th. 2020. Of course, such an announcement comes with many questions. Neil Druckmann said on a PlayStation blog post, To our fans, let me cut to the chase and get the news out the way. The Last of Us Part 2 has a new release date of May 29th, 2020. I know it was just about a month ago when we had our big blog for the game, letting media play over two hours of it along with debuting our new story trailer and revealing the release date. The positive response we saw from our community was overwhelming. You could feel the energy among the team members. After working on something for so many years, it's invigorating to get a glimpse of validation for all the hard work. However, it was during the last few weeks as we were closing out sections of the game that we realized we simply didn't have enough time to bring the entire game up to a level of polish we would call Naughty Dog quality. At this point, we were faced with two options, compromise parts of the game or get more time. We went with the latter, and this new release date allows us to finish everything up to our level of satisfaction while also reducing stress on the team. While we're relieved that we won't have to compromise our vision, we're disappointed that we weren't able to avoid this exact situation. We wish we could have foreseen the amount of polish we needed, but the size and the scope of this game got the better of us. We hate disappointing our fans, and for that, we're sorry. We hope you understand that this additional time ensures that The Last of Us Part 2 lives up to our collective ambition as well as our commitment to the highest level of quality. We know the extra few months will add to what may already be an excruciating wait for all of us. We are grateful for your patience and continued support. Come next May, you will finally rejoin Ellie in The Last of Us Part 2. Now this was very upsetting news to swallow. Not because the game was simply delayed, but it was due to the fact that Night Dog has said one thing, but did the other. It was all very clear they were trying to go about this type of issue better after Uncharted 4, but they had fallen short on such promise yet again. But what made it worse this time is the extra reassurance Neil Druckmann had just given after we received this release date. That along with all the hyping up the team did, it seemed to have just knocked us all back down. While I was disappointed as well as many others, I still feel we all had a very good understanding of the situation It was okay with it by the end of the day and continued with our patience. The team remained very quiet from this point on in regards to the game until February 11th when they announced the public would be able to have hands on with The Last of Us Part 2 at PAX East. If that already didn't sound awesome enough, they revealed that Ellie editions were also being restocked, which means they listened to the cries of the fans, some of those tears being shed for me included. Then the cherry on top was the new duality theme that featured a brand new piece from Gustavo Santelaja, the composer of The Last of Us soundtrack. Night Dog said this was all the beginning of regular communications on the game. Now, as we all know, PlayStation pulled out of PAX East, which was disappointing for some, but this is when the coronavirus pandemic was starting to pick up. So it was honestly for good due reason. 
But from here on out, Naughty Dog's marketing silence has continued from the last trailer. Although they have been very vocal with fans over on social media, if the blog posts weren't enough, or even the third restock of the Ellie editions, not the second, but the third, they were even hyping things up in style with a countdown to launch that they were brandishing every 10 days. Of course, that was up until April 2nd, 2020, when the game got indefinitely delayed. That leaves us where we are today, highly anticipating a game that we have no idea when it's coming. Now this is what we need to discuss. First, let's talk about the marketing of The Last of Us Part 2. This time around, things are clearly much more conservative when it comes to the rollout of information. We got one trailer per year, with 2019 giving us a bonus by leaving us some extra gameplay to feast upon. Amongst all the teachers we got, they have all been handled perfectly. There's not much context given behind any other revealed characters that we can tie into the narrative of the game. We have only a general idea of the plot still sitting here in 2020, and that general idea is solely from what Neil Druckmann told us back in 2016. Also, we haven't seen the biggest sections of the game, it seems. The gameplay that we got to look at thus far feels pretty bare bones, and they have assured it's only a tiny fraction of what we have coming ahead of us. This marketing strategy may feel bad because fans are thirsting for the game, but it's a vast improvement compared to Uncharted 4, and I'm glad they learned this lesson when it comes to keeping their cards close, because it keeps the experience as fresh as possibly can be. But I'm not saying this was executed perfectly because they lacked communication. I feel like if you're going to go dark with your game, you should increase the dev to fan interaction, dropping updates on how the development process is coming along. Instead of a general statement where you claim development is 60% complete, go a bit deeper. Just how deep they go is dependent on them, but some interesting words in the game could pique the interest of the person anticipating it. This would make the person have a desire to see content on the game, but at least they have a piece to read to hold them over until that time comes. Now, if you were to speak in general, the times the team did reach out, it was handled perfectly and everything landed. Communication honestly started off well, but had a heavy drop off in the end. The first rocky situation was what I had brought up earlier, and that was the multiplayer. During E3 2018, Anthony Newman actually gave a confirmation to multiplayer during an interview he had with Polygon, but then a year later all of a sudden there isn't any multiplayer. This brought so much outcry within the factions community that Night Dog even released a statement on the matter. Now my only complaint with this is whenever they decided that multiplayer was no longer, they should have come out and told us off rip instead of waiting to bear bad news whenever they gave us a huge blowout of the game leaving a piece of the community with a bitter taste in their mouths. The team also has to learn to follow up with their word. I feel they announced their regular communications in February, but didn't follow through because since then, we haven't heard anything about the game. Now for the most frustrating bit was the delay. While every other studio was speaking on their situation regarding the coronavirus, Nidog said a whole lot of nothing. At this point, fans were already running around in circles looking for an answer on what was the plan moving forward, and I feel like they just held off for too long when it came to the delay announcement. I feel when something is being highly rumored and fear mongered and your entire community is clearly showing distress, it's best to get it over with and speak up. Maybe they really didn't know how they're going to move yet, so we have to give them the benefit of the doubt here. But they finished things off well with no drop and full on answering every dying question the fans had straight on. This consisted of will there be a demo for part 2, will the game be released publicly, why did they turn to this decision, etc. And I truly do appreciate that. It was really grounded and fair of him to do, since not everyone follows the studio very closely. Some of these things have been disclosed by Arne Meyer and Scott Lowe, but no Druckmann has a bigger reach and everyone seems to look for him when it comes to all the issues. At the end of the day, I feel like this pandemic is what messed up the communication end of the production of this game. It wasn't perfect and it did need some work I stated, but this pandemic just really messed everything up for us and the team alike. Where the fans stand during all this is very clear though. People are very critical, which is okay, but the blatant ignorance, harassment, and disrespect of these people has got to stop. Every time Naughty Dog tweets showing appreciation to fans' tattoos or art, it follows with people begging for release, being entitled, or talking trash on what was posted. People also go out of their way to still bring the situation up under tweets that have no relevance on personal developers' accounts. I understand the frustration, but I honestly think it's silly behavior. The team is working very diligently to get this game to us sooner rather than later. Honestly, this reaction is to be expected though. So overall, I just wanted to say, I personally see a vast improvement from the Uncharted 4 cycle. Communication tapered off, but that was bound to happen because they were showing so little of the game in the terms of marketing. It's a direct trade-off, and I think they should implement new ways for fans to remain inside the loop, despite the game not being shown off much. This would enhance the positivity of the overall opinion when it comes to the communication of the team. The wait for The Last of Us Part 2 has been a bit rocky, but it's had great times as well. I know we're currently in a slump, but it shall smooth over in time. Honestly, right as soon as they figure out the release date. 
From there, I'm sure the marketing will have a second wind and the communication will be high. Spoilers also shouldn't be a problem because they have done very well keeping things low key this far. If I was to give Naughty Dog an overall score, I'd say a 7 out of 10. I see the effort and improvement, but there are still some minor issues. Logistical issues also are unfortunate, and they can't help that, but they have been handling the situation the best they can. If Naughty Dog again implements new ways to communicate with us while continuing to keep spoilers very low and hit the nail on the coffin when it comes to the release date with no delays, fans will be much more at ease. Even if they decide to find a way to show off more of their upcoming game while not showing too much could be a big move as well. For instance, instead of one big blowout, give minimal taste of what the big block could have been over a period of time. This way it masks their silence and gives the community much to discuss in times that would usually be droughted, which in turn slows down all the fans being agitated and nagging for content. These are all great ways that can improve to have an even better marketing and communication cycle for their next industry storming project. Naughty Dog, keep up with what you're doing. I get that you're trying and the effort is immensely appreciated. I can't wait to see what you all have been cooking with The Last of Us Part 2.